everyone? Ab Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and I am back in the US. I was traveling a lot in September. I was in Europe recently, maybe up to no good. You can see all about that in this video over here if you so desire. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone that I met and discussed Power BI with. It was great meeting you. Can't wait to see you again. But enough of that, let's jump into today's roundup. First up is a blog post from Rob Colley over at Power Pivot Pro, and he sat down with Chris Finlan. If you don't know who Chris Finlan is, Chris is a PM on the reporting services team, or as Rob likes to call him, the on-prem guy. This is a great blog post if you want some backstory of Power BI Report Server and just listen to the discussion back and forth about some of the features, why certain things happened, and just to understand from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Chris and Rob are both great guys and I'm sure you will enjoy this discussion. Be sure to check out the link in the description down below. You guys want some M IntelliSense? Whew, this one is hot. Brett Powell has a blog post where he talks about something I noticed on September 21st which coincidentally came out right before I was doing a pre-con for my deep dive on Power BI, which was awesome. Maybe a coincidence, maybe not, I don't know. This is an extension for VS Code. If you don't use VS Code, you can go to code.visualstudio.com. It is a free tool you can download. It's cross-platform, you can run it on a Mac. But the extension actually gives you M IntelliSense and syntax highlighting inside of Visual Studio Code. That's crazy. At first I thought it was just syntax highlighting, but when I went to use it, it was actual IntelliSense as well, which is awesome. VS Code is free, the extension is free. All you need to do is make sure that your file extension name is called PQ, so .pq, and then VS Code will recognize that and give you syntax highlighting as well as IntelliSense inside of VS Code. So be sure to check that out if you want help with your M queries. All you have to do is just copy and paste it into that file, open it up in VS Code, and you are good to go. So thanks, Brett Powell, for doing a blog post on that. And again, check it down in the links below. Sam McKay's got a blog post where he walks through a couple of different techniques for ranking items inside of DAX. So this is useful inside of Power BI, inside of analysis services, inside of Power Pivot. He highlights three different scenarios. So like top customers, top salesperson, how to discover the best selling item. And you can apply these techniques to other scenarios that you may be dealing with inside of your reports. He's also got associated videos for each one of these. So be sure to check this out if that's something you're interested in and you wanna learn a little bit more about DAX. Like I said before, the links for these items are down in the description below. So you can check those out along with other bonus items that I've included in this roundup. Another month, another Power BI desktop update and whew, this one was huge. There's a lot of great stuff in this update. To start off with, everyone's been asking about that bookmark feature that was highlighted at Data Insights Summit. Guess what? It's in this version of Power BI Desktop. Not only bookmarks, but spotlighting, selective items. These things can all work together to really pop your reports and make them just sizzle and be awesome. So lots of updates on the reporting side. There's some love on the analytics side as well. So we can do quick measures now on AS Live connections. So even though your models and analysis services, boom, quick measures really help you get up to speed with DAX. Also for you multidimensional folks out there, cell level formatting is now supported for AS multidimensional models. And we now have Power BI Desktop inside of the Windows Store. So if that's something you're interested in using, you can go grab Power BI Desktop, the latest update from the Windows Store and start using it today. Like I said, great update for Power BI Desktop. Be sure to check out the blog post for other items that were in this update and make sure you download the latest version of Power BI Desktop so you can start using these features today and make those reports pop. There was also a blog highlighting what happened in September for the Power BI service, the mobile app, and the gateway. And so if you're using premium, you definitely wanna check out this blog post. There were a couple of updates there for you, including vCore pooling and the ability to share dashboards with free users if you're backed by premium. On the mobile side, there were updates for filtering. There was also an update for cross-platform Visio support if you're using the Visio visual inside of your items and a couple of other items. So be sure to check out this blog post for everything that happened in the service, the mobile app, and the gateway. All right, which item was your favorite? Go ahead and leave that down below. There was a bunch of great items in this roundup that I'm excited about. 
I hope you are too. For me personally, I've got to go with the mQuery extension inside of VS Code. I love VS Code. I love the idea of having syntax highlighting and IntelliSense for M, although the Power BI desktop update was pretty neat. So let me know what your thoughts are. Leave that down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.